Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Sandy, and today I'm going to compare three different brands of masking fluid for watercolorists. And just because I'm wearing my Daniel Smith apron doesn't mean they win automatically, but I am going to compare the Daniel Smith along with Grumbacher, which I've used for a long time, and with Pebio, which is a new one to me. I always wondered if there was a big difference in performance between them. But before I get started, I want to tell you about a special fundraiser. I'm getting rid of these dot cards. I found them in my cupboard and I need to just get them out there into the world. They're from an older palette of mine, but they're lovely colors. And while supplies last, I'll be tucking ATCs into orders. Yay for that. If you want to get a little piece of art in the mail from me, the fundraiser is for ICAF, International Child Art Foundation, which is the charity that we raise money for in July with World Watercolor Month. And since I want to get the paint out the door before July, I'm starting my fundraiser early here. So links in the doobly-doo if you want to participate. The reason that I'm combining all this today is that one of the new classes coming up on July 1st, there's going to be several, but one of them is the Imaginary Creatures in Watercolor class. I've had it in alcohol marker and colored pencil, but now it's going to be in watercolor too. Masking fluid is a big part of the class and a lot of just basic watercolor techniques. It's going to be a level two class. So going to be exciting. And I thought I would probably be doing myself a favor if I explored masking fluids because I don't use them a ton and I wanted to compare three different brands. So that's what we're going to do today. So buckle in. We got a lot to cover and let's get started, shall we? So let's get to all that masking fluid testing. I have the Daniel Smith one first and I've had this one the longest and it's been in the drawer and I did not know something very important. It has this little bag and I didn't realize the bag came with the Daniel Smith stuff. I just thought I had this bag of nibs for something and a friend told me it goes on my masking fluid and it works much better than using the bottle without <laughs> the nib on it. Yeah, I am not always brighter than a box of rocks, but I did have some trouble with this. Maybe I shook it because there were bubbles in it and I struggled with the bubbles and the output. So maybe with practice, I could get this under control. And since I have it and I have the nibs now, I want to get better at using it. I don't use masking fluid often. I need to come up with some projects because otherwise these are all going to dry up in my drawer. I need to use them. But I had, as you can see, some struggles trying to get a line. And I was curious to see whether or not the line would still like be there or is the fact that it's all bubbly going to make it all disappear and that sort of thing. So I'm just kind of messing around with it to give myself something to test with. These drawings, by the way, are not in the class. They're just ones that I drew for this particular video. But I thought I'd put some highlights on the petals. And then there's the Grumbacher Miskit. And it's fuzzed out, but there you go. So much for focusing, camera. And the bright orange color on the bottom that you see, sometimes the whole thing is like seriously bright orange. That means all the color has fallen to the bottom, so you need to shake it up. And if you have to shake it up, you'll get bubbles. But you can pop the bubbles with your brush. So there's that. And I bought this set of brushes at the drugstore and it's like 10 brushes for $3 or something ridiculous like that. So I got them for masking fluid and for gouache. So I'll be testing them out with gouache soon too. To protect your brush, dip it into some liquid dish soap and that will, you know, just wipe it off so you're not putting dish soap on your project, but it's gonna keep your brush from getting like totally completely gooey and that means your brush will last longer. And even though these are cheap brushes, it would be nice to, you know, stick one in with all my masking stuff and just have that one for fluids. And the brush worked great, but you can see this one is orange compared to the white of the Daniel Smith, which means you can see where you have painted it on. It's one of the reasons that I've liked the Grumbacher for so many years, which has been you know, a, a big staple well, I shouldn't say a big staple because I don't use it a ton, but when I do, Grumbacher has always been the one. But recently, 
I decided to try some Pebio drawing gum. I'm curious about the name drawing gum. Can I use it for drawing? So I might be doing some other tests in the future. Gotta go see what else I can do with it, but it is blue as opposed to the orange. And it's, you know, one that you can see really easily. It's kind of a darkish blue and it's helpful to be able to see it as we have already talked about. This one, I have a little concern that when I start working with perhaps landscapes like I like to do or seascapes or something, am I gonna run into not being able to see where the blue gum is? Might that be a problem? I don't know. But other than that, it worked fantastically. It dries faster than the other two and it goes on nicely with this little brush. It seemed to, to function well and everything and it, you know, it just paints nice. So that's a good thing. And it's also significantly cheaper than the other two. Not that the other two are outrageous, you know, they're, um, they're twice as much as the Pebio. Pebio is just like really, really inexpensive. So I put them to the test and I painted layers and layers and layers of paint and different colors and all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to see if I could push these masking fluids and make them hold off the paint. I wanted to see if anything escaped underneath. That was kind of my, my point of the test here. And, you know, it's always fun to paint silly things anyways. <laughs> this was fun to do, just like that class was fun. But you can also see how the Daniel Smith cards work with the dot cards. You just wet the paint and then apply it to your painting. There's not a ton of paint on these, it's just one blob, but you can get enough off of it that you could put it, put, you know, a little dollop of it on a palette and mix it with another color or that sort of thing. But they're not meant for a massive painting, so they are helpful in testing new colors though to see if there's something that you want to buy a tube of. So here we have the, uh, this one is one that I had to buy a new one of. It is called a rubber cement pickup, or at least I've always called it a rubber cement pickup, but it uh, also picks up masking fluid. Those corners do get blackened over time and then I just end up cutting them off, that sort of thing. But this lifts up the masking fluid. Now some people will just rub it with their finger don't do that. You don't want to get grease all over, like the oils from your skin and stuff all over your painting. So use this little tool, do jobby. It is very helpful. I had one from college and I retired it because it was just getting too old. Poor sad thing. So I have this nicer one now. But all of the masking fluids lifted just fine. I didn't have trouble with anything. The Pebio probably was the simplest to lift up, like it wanted to come up quickly. And that made me nervous a little bit, thinking maybe when it's, you know, on the surface of the paper, is it going to like do something to the surface of the paper? Is it gonna, you know, destroy it so you can't paint over it or anything like that since it comes up quickly? And same question for the others. So that's why I wanted to paint over top of the areas that had been masked just to see how they, worked and all three of them did just great in the test. So I have found no performance difference between the three brands. I've only found color difference between them and then of course price difference as well. And I don't give numbers in videos just because prices change all the time. You know, inflation has been a thing, but if you want to check the price on the Pebio, if you're in need of masking fluid, I can definitely recommend it. I used it for the class and it worked great on a piece that I had on my desk and had my arm on it and all kinds of things. Nothing funky happened because of it. So there are my three pieces. Yes, they're in a different order here in the photo because I'm a dork, but nonetheless, I'm gonna make a card out of that. And don't forget, there is the class coming up on July 1st. Programming note, July 1st is actually a Monday and since I normally do my videos on Tuesday that week, I'm going to do it on Monday. So July 1st, I will let you know all of the scoop for what's going on for the month of July. It'll be a lot of fun. 
Don't forget to click on the link in the doobly do to go get your dot card for the fundraiser. These were from back in the days when I used to travel and teach a lot and they need to just get out into the world. And I hope you qualify to get an ATC. Sign up quickly so that you can get one in your envelope because I'd love to send you some mail. Thanks so much for watching, for hitting the like button, for sharing this with a friend and for just being an all around great person. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.